So, how would you describe the, the demographics of the organizers and the filmmakers involved? And I was wondering if you could maybe speak a bit to your experience as a woman within the organization. Yeah, this question of the demographics of the funnel, um, when I was trying to situate where the funnel fits in terms of, I guess, media art scene in Toronto and internationally, mm -hmm. I think that it's very important to try and understand the tensions around gender and gender politics that were emergent mm -hmm. in the art world, especially from like the mid-70s and forward to the mid-80s, which were, I think, a very transformational time, right? Um, the demographics of the funnel, geez, I don't even, you know, when the funnel was SIAC and uh, the two were merged together, uh, I think of punk as being a pretty guy type of deal. Uh, it isn't to say that like, you know, G.B. Jones and the totally girl punk stuff wasn't absolutely and totally significant. It completely was, and it was a very powerful scene. But I'm not sure if I totally situate it within the funnel, you know? Um, maybe as the funnel made its sort of separation from SIAG, or when they weren't in the same exact building and the, the mandates beca became distinct and there was less of the sort of like concerts in the basement and stuff like that happening, that perhaps there was a bit of a shift but I still see that as a scene that was driven by gender convention. You know, even though uh, it was uh, in your face sort of rebelling against like the bloated hippiedom um, that preceded it, it was still not exactly, you know, and performance art was dominated by dance. It's almost an embarrassment to see how many dancers took their tops off for how many, like, performances in that time. It was just like, if you were a woman, a performance artist, you just better take your top off and be a dancer. But it was kind of anti-dance at the same time, too. You know, really smart women like Elizabeth Chitty and stuff. I'm not sure if she actually took her top off, but certainly. Lots did. Electra, Margaret Dragu is kind of interpretations of, I don't know, burlesque and strip. Again, it had a punk element, but it's still, underneath all that punk, there was still something very conventionally sort of like glamorous about women and something distinctive about the kind of like what it meant to be a boy, what it meant to be a girl. Um, so enter feminism. Um, feminist film theory very important, very influential, or Malby, all the stuff. Enter feminist film theoreticians like Cass Banning. Enter feminist filmmakers like Anna Grano. Um, and suddenly you're starting to see a kind of a rupture at the funnel between uh, the women with feminist agenda well, we still see lots of evidence of that in the experimental film world. Witness Joyce Whelan, witness Maya Darren. But then you start getting the kind of feminist filmmakers that are introducing elements of documentary into their practice. That would be like Miniana Dara to an extent and, and, and uh, moi. This kind of stuff didn't exactly go over well with the experimental film mainstream kind of approach, don't worry about that, that's just what well, so. Anyway, we'll let it go. Um, Robin's my friend with the brain injury and he forgets that he's called, so he calls many times a day, but anyway, like, um, the, uh, the, I'm distracted a bit by that. So you have, like, uh, experimental documentary approaches, and I think that, um, there was a tension punk wasn't into documentary practices that had to do with um, a social agenda or with a political change or social transformation underlying the uh, motivation for the work, right? I remember I made this film in called Eye of the Mask Theater in Nicaragua. It was sort of following this theater troop around in the middle of a war zone um, in the north part of Nicaragua. It was completely an insane movie to make and no money. 
we hitchhiked everywhere with like a 60 millimeter film kit but in the back of like troop carriers there was literally we were shot in. anyway so we get back to Toronto with absolutely no money and there I'm at the funnel with the movie all which is like a big sewing machine of film and these fingerless gloves because there's no heat in the theater and Ross McLaren, who is like on the board of directors and a more, I think, kind of, he made all these amazing punk documentaries, but was absolutely against any kind of like contamination of experimental film in our boyish kind of way that we know and love it. But he's like, he saw that I had marked this big dissolve with a wax pencil on the work print. And he said, this is not an experimental film. He said, experimental films don't have dissolve. Okay, thank you for illuminating me on that. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I use that as an example because like, in some ways this kind of purity, formal purity that involved like uh, punkishness combined with image manipulation effects and um, sort of sarcastic reusing of, remixing of old advertising footage and stuff like that, uh, sort of resuscitated porno kind of things, it all in a way added up to a different trajectory than some of the feminist work was following. And so I think that the tensions began to become more obvious. And then when you get a director of the organization, so Michelle McLean, also a feminist, you get a, dir a director of the organization like David McIntosh, who is a very queer activist um, and proto-feminist guy, it becomes a, a schism, right? It becomes like a wedge. And uh, uh, what becomes at stake is a vision of what experimental film practice is. And I think that, that it really got played out. I don't know if that really answers the question around the demographic. I mean, I talked a lot about the gender turmoil, but um, the main thing I would say about the demographic is it was pretty largely white, um, though I'm sure that, you know, people like Cameron Bailey and, and Midiana Dare and stuff are going to kick me, but like the, the, I just think, or Rebecca Baird, who's Aboriginal, you know, like it, so it wasn't uncontaminatedly white in any shape, but it was pretty much young too, I think. Mm. That's great.